Hey folks, this is Colin Richards, president and founder of Lord & Richards, and I am thrilled to be with you for yet another session of the Lord & Richards Show. And today, we're going to be bringing you advice and counsel about how you can achieve financial independence in the midst of a crazy mixed-up world. And as you know, at Lord & Richards, we seek to do that from a biblical standpoint. And so we come alongside of people who are really concerned about events going on in our world that are uh, volatile, out of their control, and we help you bring together a plan for financial independence so you can achieve your goals in retirement without worry. And we do that so that you can do wonderful things with the resources that God has put at your disposal. And so today we're going to be talking about yet another biblical principle found in Psalm one. Here it is, and here's our principle. Be like a tree. You say, you mean make like a tree and leave? No. Listen to what the psalmist in the very first psalm gives us as advice for life. Psalm 1, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. Wow, that's some great advice, isn't it? Well, what does that mean, Colin? Well, we learn in this passage he's setting up a contrast. He's going to talk about, first of all, a man he will later call the righteous, okay? And he has certain character characteristics. Number one, he doesn't take advice from the wicked. I uh, alliterate this. I can't help it as a pastor. He believes them. He believes them, right? So, Often in financial circles, I am surprised to see what even God's people are willing to believe that's published out there in the financial media. For example, many people have been led down the primrose path of Bitcoin only to have their dreams and ambitions shattered because of taking advice from the unrighteous. Not the righteous, but what the passage will call the wicked. Secondly, this person does not keep company with sinners. It says he doesn't stand in the way of sinners. In other words, he doesn't behave like them. So believing them, behaving like them. And so he doesn't make the same foolish choices and decisions that people who refuse to regard God are making. And then thirdly, this person does not take up leadership with the wicked. It says he does not sit in the seat of the scoffers. You know what it is to scoff at something and mock it and make fun of it. Well, this kind of person avoids people who scoff at godly things, righteous things. And if I'm going to continue my alliterated outline, not just believing them, not just behaving like them, but belonging with them, right? You set up a position on a seat in the ancient culture. That was a place of leadership. And so now you belong. You really belong. We remember this, of course, with Lot in the Old Testament, who became a judge. He sat in the gate of Sodom. And so three things that the righteous does not do when it comes to life, when it comes to money. But the passage goes on to say, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. So this person, by contrast, rather than believing, behaving, and belonging, like and with the wicked, he loves drinking in the Word of God. She spends time day and night meditating on it. It's a transformation process, the Bible says. Your thinking is radically altered as you drink in the truth of God's Word, and it changes how you invest. It changes how you think about money. And all too often, I see believing people, God's people, the righteous, unfortunately feeling that they can only take advice from those whose lives do not reflect a desire to glorify God. Well, what's the result when we avoid the wicked's advice, when we drink in God's Word instead? Well, it says, this person is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. Its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Wow, what an abundant life, right? A life that is fruitful, to have a right perspective on the world that we live in, creates a person who is like a fruitful tree. Great. Drinking in the water here, in this case, the Word of God. Prosperous. Everything this person does prospers. You say, is this like my free ticket to prosperity? Well, let me just add this comment. This person is being led by God. They are following God's principles. They're steeped in the Word of God, and so they're making consistent choices that honor God and therefore do lead to the right kind of prosperity. May not be talking here about uh, abundant wealth from a financial standpoint, but the real wealth, 
right? And then the Lord, as a result, we learn later in the psalm, regards the way of this person. He looks upon them with favor. He enjoys them. That's the relationship God has for us. Well, what about the other person in the psalm? So we're not now talking about the righteous, but the psalmist goes on to say in Psalm 1, verse 4, the wicked are not so, they're not like this, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. You've seen pictures of, of uh, ancient cultures and modern cultures where people are raising wheat as a crop. And in a manual scenario, they take that wheat, put it on a great sheet, and toss it into the wind on a breezy day. And when that breeze passes by, the gravity and the weight of the wheat brings it back down, and the lightness and the insubstantial nature of the chaff causes it to blow away. The chaff has no useful purpose. And unfortunately, the wicked, those who do not regard God, the Bible says, don't live the prosperous, abundant life of the righteous. Rather, they're like chaff. Their life has no impact, no gravity, no substance. And here's a powerful reminder. The passage says they will not stand in judgment. They'll fall down when they face God, and their way will perish. Of course, this is not the way of God's people, but this is the way of those who disregard God and are not concerned about His Word, His ways, or His glory. So what does that mean for you and finances? Well, at Lord & Richards, I'm very grateful blessed of God to have assembled a team of people who do regard God in their way, who are seeking to meditate on Him and His Word. Our team, as a matter of fact, even gathers and prays for our clients on a weekly basis. And what's the point of that? Well, because we want our advice, our counsel, our friendship with our clients, the love that we show to be patterned after the biblical counsel, wisdom, and love that we find in the Word of God. And it makes all the difference in the world. Because retiring with a lot of money is not the same as retiring financially independent. And so I would be delighted, along with my team, to visit, to help, to come around and surround you with biblical counsel and love so that we can help you become financially independent in a crazy, topsy-turvy world. It really just begins with a simple phone call. 